Right, I've connected up now my Hero Yasu using a USB C lead. Connected it up to my PC. Didn't need to install any drivers. Um, as soon as I turned the power supply onto the radio, that is before I even powered the radio on, the computer recognized something was plugged in. So that's got to be a good sign. I'm now going to go down to the software that I found for this radio. And uh, I'll just open it up and show you the software. And as you can see here, it's called SF Sugar Fox 8118. I'll put a link in the description to where I found it. There may be other sources for it. It wasn't that easy to find. I actually found it on, um, on an Amazon website, strangely. But there you go. Um, you can already see on the radio, I've had a little go at this software because um, you'll see that VFOA is, sh is now showing with the call sign of my local repeater, GB3BC. I've programmed that in. Um, but I'll just run through how to use this software and I'll put another channel in for you to see. and We'll see what other features we can change uh, within the radio. You'll see straight away on SF8118, at the bottom we have the coverage of the radio. So UHF it runs from 400 to 470 megahertz. And on VHF we've got 136 to 174 uh, megahertz. So quite a wide coverage. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to read from the radio. I always recommend you do this because the radio is likely to come pre-programmed with a number of frequencies from the factory. So it's always interesting to see just what's on there, if nothing else. And you can always save that file if you wish. So let's click on this button. You can see it says read from radio as we hover over it. We'll click that. We confirm the start. And you should see on the screen of the radio now we've got, uh, we had a little picture of a computer and then an OK. And then the radio momentarily uh, rebooted itself. So on the software, we've got a success screen. We'll OK that. And now here are the memories. You can see that at the top is the one that I uh, put in just while I was testing out this software for the first time. That's my local repeater. The other, I've saved the original file, by the way, so that whatever that channel was, I do have a copy of it. But you can see the rest of the frequencies are what, what came with the radio from the factory. So there's quite a few. In fact, I think there's 40. Uh, there's 40 channels programmed fairly randomly, it would seem. Uh, mainly VHF, but there's some, some UHF stuff there as well. OK, so I'm going to put another repeater in here to another repeater within reach of me locally, just so we can see how easy it is to program. So this particular repeater, the RX frequency, receive frequency is going to be 145600. The transmit frequency is going to be 145.0. Um, I'm going to set a CTCSS encode of 94.8. And just get that there like that. I'm going to leave the power as high. Put the bandwidth to narrow for the VHF repeaters. They're on narrow. And then under the channel name, I'm going to put the call sign of the repeater which in this case is GB3WR. Now, obviously, I'm not going to go through and input loads and loads of memories. It's going to be a very tedious video. It was just to show you how easy it is to put a channel in there. And obviously, we can set CTCSS encode and decode here. We can set the power setting, um, bandwidth wide and narrow. We can add the channel to a scan list. I'm not sure what uh, busy inhibit and special TCS are. Compander, I would turn off. I think that's some kind of speech processor. I'm not sure. We certainly don't want a scrambler turned on, so we leave that off. So those, that's the channel screen. So we could run through and program all of these up. I don't know how many channels are there. Looks like there's 240 in total, so it should be enough for most purposes. Okay. Let's look at the optional frequency, optional features tab. I'm sorry. Let's click on that. And uh, these are the other menu items we can change in the radio. So um, we've got VFOA. 
I guess that's where it will default if you have uh, the radio in VFO mode. I'm going to change that to the uh, VHF calling frequency there and we'll have B on the UHF calling frequency. Um, the other things we can change here, we've got CTCSS again, turn it off on a simplex frequency. TX power, bandwidth wide or narrow, offsets, um, steps. Interestingly, these are the steps that this radio frequency steps it can do. So it runs from 2.55, 6.25, which makes it suitable for um, a PMR446. It wouldn't be legal, but um, it's got the suitable steps if you wanted to use it there. Uh, not, I'm not condoning that, by the way, but I guess some people will want to program it for 446. We've got 10K, 12.5K, 20K, 25 and 30, and then right up to 50K steps. Same for VFOB, obviously. We can turn on or off a, a key beep, show the channel name, which I've got switched on on this one anyway. Single frequency mode. Let's, let's try single frequency mode. That's interesting. Um... Hopefully that will leave us with one single display on the radio. We'll see it'll be better. Lock in channel mode, don't know what that is, menu. I presume by unticking that box, we could make it so that you couldn't enter the menu from the radio itself. So to stop anyone messing around with the settings. So that could be useful depending on how you're using this radio. Double watch, I'm going to leave that unticked. Uh, I tend not to use dual watch features anyway. But I'll also leave a link to, um, there's a, a, a YouTuber in the USA and he's got one of these and he had an issue with it making a strange clicking noise and that clicking noise was because the thing was in, in double watch or dual watch mode. So I'm not going to bother with that. Um, over to the right then we've got um, squelch setting which runs from 0 to 9. This one's on 5. Timeout timer. TOA, no idea what that is. I'll have to look at the manual. Priority scan, scan resume, so the scan settings. We can uh, put in a key lock. We can have the um, backlight on the radio going out after a set time if we wish. We can inhibit the ABVFO switch, I guess, which is on the microphone. And um, is there one on the radio? No, I don't think there is, just on the microphone. Automatic power off, that could be useful if you've got the radio in a car. You can set a time for the radio to, to turn itself off. I've set the power on message with my call sign and name. Language, we are leaving it English. You've only got English or Chinese, just two choices there. Roger beep, we're going to leave off. You can set a home channel. Uh, microphone in hand. Believe it or not, apparently there is a microphone built into the radio itself. So... In theory, you could use it without a handheld mic. I think you'd have to be very close to the radio, and I don't think the quality would be too good, but that feature is there. Denoise, I'm going to turn it off. I don't really know. Again, that's um, uh, a read the manual moment, I think. Whether there's some uh, noise reduction, I don't know whether that's on transmit or receive. I don't know. And we've got Vox controls at the bottom here, Vox gain and Vox delay, but I've got the Vox off at the moment. So, remember I added one extra channel here, uh, GB3WR repeater, so I'm going to write that to the radio now. So the second button over here, write to radio, we'll push that. We get a confirmation screen to start. We'll see the radio screen again with a little computer screen. OK, it reboots. We've got a success message here. And the uh, you can see now the um, the single channel or single VFO watches work. Now we've just got just got the one um, channel being displayed, whereas before we had both VFOs. If I turn the encoder knob, there's GB3WR. That's the repeater I've just programmed in. I can go to VFO mode, and um, we're still in. There's VFO mode. So we've just got a single display, which I prefer actually. I don't see any point in having the dual display there. Um, but using the microphone, I'll just demonstrate here. Okay, so on the mic, you've got um, A and B buttons. So by hitting uh, button B, 
and then on the uh, UHF side back to VHF so that's and I can actually hear a little relay click when I switch bands so I'm guessing if you had this in dual watch mode on receive it's going to be clicking away as it switches between uh, VHF and UHF so we don't want that so I'm going to leave that off anyway there you go that is the SF8118 software for the Hero Yasu IC980 Pro fairly straightforward to use um, in the next video we'll have a look at what we can actually do directly from the radio in terms of accessing its menu and we'll see whether we can actually program a memory without the use of the software I, it's not a hundred percent clear from the manual whether that's possible but I suspect it probably is I hope it is but we'll try we'll see what else we can alter but in the meantime um, off camera obviously when I've got a bit more time I'm going to program up a full set of channels into this radio so it's going to be of some use to me when I take it out and about but thank you for watching